switches and you. Scapegoat57 here showing you how to put switches into your game. So let's say you have a player that needs to open a door by toggling a switch. So two things need to happen in order for that to occur. We have our player needs to use the switch and the switch needs to open the door. Now these set of actions um, aren't really applicable for most situations. Let's say you want to switch to also uh, close the door or you want the switch to toggle the door or you have a player instead of using the switch maybe uh, he steps on the switch steps on the switch and that causes the door to open or close. Or let's say the door isn't a door at all. Let's say it's a um, like a light beam or something and you need the switch to turn it on get the end. So there's a lot of generic actions going on that it um, and we need to make a system that will allow us to uh, do all these things do all these things um, and be super easy to use in the unity editor. So let's uh, break down what uh, we need step by step. We'll start with the door. So what does a door need to do? Well a door uh, needs to open and it needs to close and let's say it also needs to toggle if it's closed it'll open if it's open it'll close and what are some properties of the door uh, let's say that a door can be you'll say is open that's really all a door is it's either open or closed and then it can either open itself close itself or toggle itself now a switch a switch, um, we're going to have to be uh, super generic with our switch because our switch, of course, we want it to be able to open doors, close doors, toggle doors, or turn on lights, or turn off lights, or make something blow up. Tons of different things. And the old way of, or uh, the like object-oriented way of doing things would be making a switch for each type of object it would act upon. So you need a switch for a door, you need a special switch for a light bulb, you need a special switch for an explosion, and you'll need a separate switch if it is, um, if it's a pressure switch, if something's got to turn on it, or step on it. So in order to bypass all that, we're going to use the magic uh, send message command. Terrible handwriting. Uh, so send message allows us to just pass it a string what we want it to do or what function we want it to call and then it'll look on the uh, called object and see if it has a function by that name and if it does it'll call it so all we have to do is say uh, when our switch will say um, it'll have our switch can turn on and our switch can turn off and our switch can also toggle And then the properties of our switch, it'll have an on message. So when our switch turns on, it'll broadcast or it'll send this message to whatever it's targeting. It should also have a target. <laughs> um, and so if our uh, on message just happens to be in quotes open, and our door has an open message, it'll just magically call that function. And if it has, we can also have an off message. So if we turn our switch off, um, it'll fire a separate message, and that might be send message close. If we're talking to a door, or if we're talking to a light, it'll be send message turn off. Now our player, our player really doesn't need to do much. All it needs to do is have a use function, and what that'll do is it'll uh, it'll also send a message use to whatever uh, it happens to be uh, stepping on. So it's going to have a list of, uh, of colliders. Uh, so if it's stepping on a switch, it'll send use to that switch. And the switch will, depending on how it's set up, we might call it turn on, and it'll open that door. It's a whole bunch of indirection, but you'll see it's um, super easy, super generic and editor friendly. So here in my Unity editor I've got a sample scene already kind of set up with uh, Kenny Pixel platformer assets going on. Um, let's hit play. 
So I already have a generic uh, player controller. I can move left and right. And I think I can jump. Yeah, I can jump. Uh, I have animators set up. Let's drag the game up. I have animators set up on the switch. So currently it's switched off, and then it also has a boolean on. If that boolean gets switched on, you see the switch uh, flips over, flips its sprite. And the door, I also have a open boolean on the door animator, and you can open and close that way. It doesn't do anything yet, it just flips the switch, or it flips the sprite. And in our scene, I have it coded so the door has a solid trigger on it. And the switch itself. We don't need to look at that anymore. And the switch itself has a trigger collider, and the door itself has a box collider, uh, not a trigger. Regular, regular collider. So the uh, assets we're going to need. I also, I have some skeleton scripts already made. We're going to need a switch script. Going to need a door script, a uh, player script for your player, and then the different types of switches we're going to be making a pressure switch for when we're uh, we need uh, something to step on it in order to activate the switch and usable switch is a switch that uh, will be uh, toggleable by our player so go ahead and make those scripts and then follow me first we're gonna start with our door uh, here I have some code in here basically just to grab the animator that's currently on the door if you don't have an animator on your door you don't need any of this um, but I do, so I need it. So going back to our image, our door has our open, close, toggle functions, and it has boolean is open. So let's go ahead and just plop those right in here. So we're going to have a public tool is open. That'll control our open. And then we're going to have some functions. We'll put them under start. So, avoid open. Or when we want to open our door. Public void close. Or when we want to close the door. Public void toggle. Or when we want to toggle our door. And then set open. I don't like the name of that. So the set state is going to be the, our nuts and bolts uh, function that's going to be basically called by every other function. So our set state, we want to set our we want to set our door to open or close. So here I already say uh, tell our animator to set the open boolean. So depending on what's getting passed to it, I also set is open to whatever it's passed. And oh, we also need for my door. It's got a collider on it that you can't pass through. Uh, I'm gonna grab that collider. And then if we, and then I'll set its collider. I'll set it to is trigger. So we'll grab a grab the collider when we start. And now let's say we set our door to open. We'll set our collider's is trigger to true. So that way we'll we'll be able to pass right through it. I could also set you know my collider that is enabled or enabled to uh, false and all that. But I let's say you want your door to still be passing uh, trigger events even when it's open. So this is a good way to get by that. So if we want to open our door, all we gotta do is set check to see if we're not already open. If we're not open, then set our state to true. All we gotta do, if we're closed, First, we want to check if we're open. If we are open and we're trying to close, we'll set our state to false. And 
our toggle, we're going to say if we're open, close, else, open. So whenever toggle is called, it checks to see if, if we're already open, close ourselves, if not, then open ourselves. And that's basically all there is to it, to a door. Not too intimidating. Now the hardest, uh, trickier part now is our switch. Oh, the scroll on there. Oh, I comment these lines. All right, so a switch. Also, I already got the code in there just to grab the animator and set its bool or swap its state around in the in its animator. Now going back to our picture, we have a switch. It can turn on. It can turn off. It can toggle. And then we've got our on message, our off message, and our target. So let's go implement that right now. So we've got a public, uh, we'll say game object target. We'll have a public string on message, a public string off message. We'll also have a public bool is on, which will relay the state of our switch, whether it's on or off. So then our functions, public boy turn on, for when we want to turn our switch on. Turn off, for when we want to turn our switch off. Toggle for when we want to toggle our switch. So when we turn on our switch, first we have to check to see if we are not on. Then set state. Set ourselves to on. Then if we're turning off, only do it if we are on. False. Toggle. Same as the door. If if we're on, turn off. Else, turn on. And then in our set state, when a switch turns on, or when a switch sets its state, we're going to set is on. Is on. Now, if we are turning on. We want to broadcast our on message to our target. Before we do that, we gotta check to see if our target is null or our on message is null in case our designer screwed them up in the editor. So if our target is not equal to null and our on message is not null or empty, then we can successfully send our message. So all we have to say is target. Send message on message. And then we'll also add the stipulation uh, don't require a receiver. Oh, actually, no, we should leave that on for this part. So it throws an error if you accidentally type in the wrong message. So if we're turning on, send our message to our target. If we're turning off, do the same exact thing. I'm just going to copy it. Replace that with off uh, message. All right, so our switch set up. It can turn on, it can turn off, it can toggle, and when it does either of those things, it sets its state accordingly and sends a message to the target. So two thirds of the way there. Now we just need to make it so our player can use the switch. So here's my beginner or my simple player controller you don't need any of this you're gonna have your own but what we need to focus on is um, how our player is going to interact with switches now let's add the condition that a player can only use a switch if it happens to be uh, on top of it so if those two things are intersecting um, 
we press, we'll say fire one, it'll use the switch, quote unquote. Um, if there's multiple switches there, it'll just use them all at once. That's fine. Uh, leave it up to your designer to hopefully uh, keep those switches separate. So in order to do that, we need to keep track of all the switches we are currently on top of. So we're going to need a list of colliders, collider 2Ds. Um, let's call it, that's a good name, uh, in colliders, sure. And we'll initialize it right there. Now when we enter a trigger, we want to add it to our list of colliders. And then when we exit a trigger, we want to remove it from the list of uh, colliders. So we're just going to go bottom, on trigger enter. All right, a little inefficient maybe, but it works. So every time we collide with a trigger, we'll add it to our list. Every time we leave it, we'll remove it. So now we have ink colliders, now contains uh, all the triggers we're currently colliding with. And now we just need to say if we press fire one, we want to uh, tell all those triggers to um, use its use command. So we're going to say if so if we're pressing fire one then we want to say hey all you triggers that we're currently colliding with uh, we want to for each trigger inside of it we want to say Send message use and we don't want to require a receiver. So some of the triggers we're going to be colliding with, they're um, they're not going to have a use function. Maybe you know it's a trigger inside a door, it's a trigger inside a, a pressure switch. So not everything's going to have a use. A use function so we don't want to require a receiver but all the ones that do like our switches our player can interact with or maybe there's a, something on the ground the player can pick up uh, if it has a use function we want to call it and this uh, for each just uh, you could use a for loop or a, f a for each loop this is just a, a way to stick it all in one line and make it easier to look at using lambda functions pretty great so now we got our player. It fires the use command at uh, anything it's touching. So now we just need a switch that um, has a use uh, function to call. So if we go to, I've got a usable switch here. And basically it just has a function, public void use, and all it does is call toggle. And usable switch, it extends switch, because it's a switch. You might think, oh, I'll just, you know, skip steps and just put use on the switch class, but then you might have problems later on where you have a pressure switch that's going to jump in the gun. But when we make our pressure switch, we don't want you to be able, uh, the player to be able to use, quote unquote, uh, a pressure switch. So we need a separate class specifically for switches that the player can interact with. So save all that. Editor. Everything compiles. So the switch here, we're going to add our usable switch component to it. And a door here, we're going to add the door component. And then back to our switch. 
uh, we want to target the door. The on message, we want to call open. And the off message, we want to call close. And that's all there is to it. Let's run. Player will walk over. We'll press fire one. Switch toggles. The door opens. And that collider's been turned off. And we can touch our goal flag. Yay. Let's go back. Toggle it off. Door closes. Can't walk through it. So hunky dory. Everything is great. Now some uh, complexities we can add or niceties. Let's say we have two switches. Duplicate. Two switches. And we only want this door to open if both switches are currently on. As the way it is now, we can turn this one on. And each one controls the door separately. So we want it, if both of them are open, we want that door to open. Now instead of dealing with like switch groups and um, creating groups of switches that constantly check to see if both conditions are true or something in order to open the door, we're just gonna implement something called knocks on our door. So let's say every time a switch tries to open a door, it knocks on the door first. And if the uh, certain number of knocks have been reached for that door, it'll open itself up. So in the case of this door here, we need two knocks to open that door. So let's create some variables for our door. Public int uh, knocks to open. The number of required knocks to open this door. And a, cry a private int um, the knock so far the number of knocks we've currently received. So when we try to open the door, we'll increase our knocks, knocks plus plus. When we close the door, or call close on the door, we'll say knocks minus minus. And now our door should only open if we're calling open on our door. We should first check if we're closed. If we are closed and our knocks equals equals knocks to open, then we can uh, set our state to true. So go back to our game, let it compile. Door set here, next to open, we'll say two. Run the game. So now, toggle this switch, nothing. Come to this switch, toggle it on, hey, opens up. We're all good. But now if we close any of the switches, since the number of knocks is insufficient to open the door, it closes itself. I guess we should also add in our close, we should only close it if the number of knocks is less than or equal to, or less than knocks to open. And this, I guess, should be greater than or equal to. So. If you have complicated puzzles with a bunch of doors knocking on, or a bunch of switches knocking on different doors, um, some of them will have more than enough knocks, some of them will have less than enough knocks. We gotta be able to keep it, the door open. Uh, so if we switch this back to one, did I save this? I did not. Save, recompile. So we go over here. Since it only requires one knock, I can toggle this one all I want. It stays open, but as soon as there are zero knocks on it, it closes. So that's about as complex as you can make a door. Uh, we don't really need to mess with that anymore. That's a good looking door. So we'll close that. So the switch though, we can make our switch crazy complicated <laughs> and um, useful would be a better word. So let's say we want our switch to only turn on once and never be able to be turned off. So as soon as it's turned on, it'll never turn off. Let's also say we also want a switch that uh, resets itself after, after a certain amount of time has elapsed. That'd be useful. And let's also say we wanted a switch that um, reset itself immediately as soon as you flipped it. So you toggle it, it'll fire the on message, and then immediately turn itself off. 
So instead of making a whole bunch of different switches with all those individual behaviors, we'll create um, an enum and we'll call it reset type. And a reset type, we can have a, a switch reset never. It'll never be able to reset it once it's been turned on. Uh, we can say on use. So that's our default behavior. It'll reset whenever, next time you use it. Uh, timed for if we want a it to reset itself after a certain amount of time is passed and immediately for when we want it to reset immediately. All right, and then we'll create our public reset type. Or should we call it, we'll call it lowercase reset type. And the default behavior will set to on use. Oh, we should also go back to my door. Next to open, that default should be one. Okay, I lied earlier. So now we got our reset type. Uh, for our timed reset type, we also need a public float uh, reset time to control uh, as a float the number of seconds the switch should wait before resetting itself. Yeah. Okay, so let's get going. So go to our nuts and bolts set state. So if we are turning on and let's say after we send our message, if our reset type is equal to reset type dot immediately, we want to uh, turn off immediately, right away. Get it done. If else if our reset type is equal to timed, then we want to invoke turn off. So invoke allows you to um, call a function. You just type in its name there. And then tell it the time it should wait before invoking that function. So we want to invoke turn off. A reset time amount of seconds later. All right, and then now if we're turning ourselves off, we only really need to care. Let's see, turn off. If we're currently on and our reset type does not equal never. <laughs> yep, so when we turn ourselves off, or when we're trying to turn ourselves off, we first have to check whether or not we're on already, and our reset type equals never. If it's never, we should never be able to turn ourselves off. So that's all we need for our switch. Back to the game. Wait for it to compile. Let's get rid of this other one. And we'll run it. So we got our switch. Let's first, it's on use. Let's see if, every, if that still works. Go over here, fire, fire. Still works, great. So now let's set to never. Let's see what happens. Toggle on, yeah, can't turn it off. Back to on use, we can toggle it off. Timed, we'll set our reset time to two seconds. Fire it, two seconds later, it's closed. But we can still close it ourselves. Might want to change that. And then immediately, as soon as we, it doesn't even look open, but it certainly is opening. It's just closing right away. So let's fix that. All right, we'll just hack on and reset type. Uh, can't equal timed, and then we'll just add yeah, uh, void timed reset. We'll call set state false. And then instead of invoking turn off, we'll invoke timed reset.
All right, let's try it out. Do, do, do. Run it, switch. You're timed. Two seconds. Come over, fire. One, two. Close, fire, mesh, 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 mesh. Close, all right. Switch is working perfectly. All right, so that is an example of a switch that the player can interact with. Well, that's not good enough. Let's say we wanted a switch that the player has to uh, jump on. I've created another another sprite here. All it does is it has a button. Let's remove that. Uh, it's got a sprite. It's a button. It's got an animator. The animator attached to it. Just is the same as a switch. When it gets toggled on, the button is in the press state. When it's off, it's in the up state. And then it's got a collider that's also set to a trigger. So for a pressure switch, let's go here. Pressure switch. It extends switch. It's a special type of switch. For a pressure switch, we just have to keep track of the number of colliders that are currently we're currently intersecting with. And as long as that number is greater than zero, that means something's pressing on top of us, and we want to turn ourselves on. And then as soon as that number reaches zero, which means nothing's touching us, we want to turn ourselves off. So we'll just keep track of uh, the number of colliders we're colliding with. We'll say number uh, colliding. Uh, I'm terrible with names. And then um, void on enter. So when a trigger enters us, we're going to increase the number of colliding, and we'll turn ourselves on. Now you might think that's redundant, but if we're already on calling turn on, we'll just uh, it'll cancel out because that's the first if statement right on there. It won't it won't do anything extra. It won't like fire a message again. And then void on trigger exit. Ooh. 2D. We'll decrease the number colliding, and then if number colliding is equal to zero, nothing's inside of us, we'll turn off. So, yeah, that's all there is to it for a pressure switch. Let's go ahead and. Did I save it? I saved it. Okay. Recompile. Um, just to show it, we got our button here. Add the pressure switch component. Set it to on use. The target, again, is going to be our door. On message is going to be open. Off message is going to be close. Hit run. Player steps on it. Button gets stopped down. And the door opens. We leave it goes back up because the reset type is on use. If we set this to never, step on it, that switch, that's never going back up. So I push it back to on use, kind of have to step on it, reset it. Uh, we set it to immediately. Uh, it got pushed down, but then immediately popped back up. And then do times, we'll give it two seconds. Two seconds, step on it, leave, Oop. two seconds later, pop, pops back up. Perfect. Now let's say this door needs two knocks to open. Luckily we got two switches here to open it. Let's go ahead and add an obstacle. I have here a box. A box is just a box collider with a rigid body. Basically everything. Just added a sprite renderer to it. And now all we have to do, we push, push. Why aren't you pushing box? Oh, 
it's too heavy. How did that? Let's see if that did it. But yeah, okay, too heavy. Oof. Push it on there. Switch is switched. Open that. Home free. Da -da -da -da. So pressure switches can be activated by any trigger inside of them. If you want, you can add filtering on it. Just on the, you get the collider there that it's colliding with. So you can check to see if like a certain type of box is stepping on it. Then it'll turn itself on. You can have it so just the player can step on it. You can have, you can filter it any way you want. Uh, you're given the collider. Uh, you can do cool things like. Uh, Let's grab this. We've got a moving platform here. So I got a platform. It's got a moving platform script. All it does is have two functions, move left and move right. Oh, and a third stop. These switches here are tied to, or they are not tied to the platform. Let's put that in there. Platform, button here, target the platform. So now if I, Kind of jump myself up here. Step on the switch. I'm moving left. Let's step on that switch. I'm moving right. Moving platform. Easy peasy. Uh, some other things we can do. We need to be able to have our switch uh, be able to target more than one um, target. That would be super nice. For if you want to open multiple doors with one switch or do some crazy game logic. So let's go to our switch. Instead of having game object target, it is now list game object targets. And then instead of target not equal null targets dot count is greater than zero. Uh, targets dot for each. Again, lambdas, they're super great. Learn how to use them. Targets dot count greater than zero. Targets for each and, and again you could just use a for loop or for each for each loop if you wanted to. This just puts it all on one line. Do do do. Alright, so now we can send a message to more than one target. Oh and we don't forget to initialize it otherwise bad things so now if we have a door here we duplicate it move it over we'll have this switch now our targets do 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 yeah so let's lock the inspector select our two doors drag and drop them into the targets now target door door um, I think our, these knocks are also set to oh my, the inspector. Yeah, we'll switch these back to one. They've all gone over. Open the switch. Both doors open and close. So then, if you wanted to get freaky deaky, we'll duplicate it again. Drag it over. Um, this. Switch can target. I'll duplicate it again. So this switch, lock it. It's going to have this door as a target and this door as a target. Unlock this switch, we'll move you over. Uh, let's clear those out. Lock it again. This door is a target. So is this door. Oop. I kind of want to push this here. Put those open. These open. Home free. And then if you wanted to get even crazier, if we had this switch here. it it's another switch instead of calling open and close we can just call toggle and toggle and this 
switch. Toggle, toggle. Okay. Oh, do I have the inspector locked? Jeez. That always gets me. Unlock. Change this to toggle. And toggle. You can see you can set up a logic puzzle with one toggling them and this one will toggle them back. And then you can have them, you know, this one will toggle this one and that one, and then that one and the other one. And you have a third switch that toggles every third one or something like that. And then you get a whole, you get a whole uh, logic puzzle going where they have to toggle them in the right order in order to open up all the doors. So we're almost done with functionality for our switch. The last thing we got to do is implement um, the ability for the switch to destroy itself after it's been toggled. It might be useful for one-time switches. You don't want them to be accidentally triggered anymore, so it's good to just have them destroy themselves as soon as they fire their message and be done. So let's go back to our switch. We'll add another enum type, public enum uh, destroy type. And we'll say never. It'll be on and off. So we can destroy ourselves never. We can destroy ourselves after we've turned on. And we can destroy ourselves after we have uh, turned off. And then in our turn on, or we'll do it in our set state. That's where it should be. If, uh, oh, we didn't make a player one. Public destroy type. Uh, destroy win. So if destroy win equals destroy type on. Ooh. Everything's breaking. Uh, destroy this that game object. You don't need the this, but it looks it's it looks good. Uh, if destroy when equals equals we'll type off and destroy game object. So we destroy ourselves uh, after we've switched. So let's try that. This switch here will say destroy type. We'll destroy when you're on. This one will destroy when you're off. So switch, it's gone. Switch, still there. Switch, dead. You can also set this up for it'll destroy itself when it turns off and also make it make it timed at two seconds. So when we toggle it, oh. Oh, immediately. That's not timed. So now, if we toggle two seconds later, it turns off and destroys itself. Now you might think, uh, what we need that for, but let's say, get rid of these, get rid of those, and we'll add a button here. And we'll take that button and We'll lock it. I guess we'll give it all the doors as targets. Unlock. Uh, on message, open close. And then you could have something like this scene here. Where you're trying to get to the flag, so you walk through. And that door closes. And then you're walking over here. Okay, oh, it's closed. What's going on? And then a spooky ghost. Oh my goodness. The scariest thing ever. <laughs> so, don't spook your users this bad. But, yeah. Triggers, invisible triggers. You can just disable the uh, sprite component or just remove it completely if you don't need it. And uh, that's all there is to switches. Uh, let me know if you got any more questions. Okay, bye.